the codified laws that we see uh, see today are perhaps uh, quite recent and in fact the unidirectional approach to our values is something that we were never aware of and perhaps is something new uh, again that is being introduced uh, post the independence of india but before we talk further uh, you know I, I think we have also inherited certain values which are not native if i may say um, absolutely if we talk about things like the mughal invasions and um, you know uh, the british colonialism uh, for that matter and we can also talk about how even in concurrent times um, the islamic world in the middle east or even the euro christian societies are not very accepting of a queer community and we see violence against them even today but before getting into that do you think these invasions and uh, colonial experiences actually changed our perception towards a lot of these things so in my uh, research of sanatan vedic dharma i have discovered over 67 hold your breath 67 sanskrit terminologies which talks about diverse gender identities orientation and expression and this goes back to dates like in, in 200 bc 500 bc in the in the scripture such as narada smruti charaka samhita and so on and so forth shabda kalpa druma now when we have so much of diversity acknowledged i I'm, i do not have a proof of was it accepted or not but it was acknowledged and considered as part of the society for sure so look at from this point of view that we in our ancient time our scriptures our rishis and enlightened beings have talked about queer genders diversities and expression not just one twice but they have described 67 sanskrit terminologies and anybody who is interested to know more about it can reach to me and i'll be happy to share those resources so there is an act there is ample amount of references to queerness there then we come to mughal time wherein we were put behind the curtains wherein only one way to live life socially was acknowledged also promoted and then more than mughals from the queer standpoint it is the british who brought in the law called as ipc 377 which criminalized us in our own land which criminalized me by birth in my own home country in my own home rashtra so i think mughals for sure on top of it britishers who came in from their biblical understanding of what is right and what is wrong what is moral and what is immoral and created the laws based on this biblical understanding criminalized us and what we in india did we continued that law even after we got independence till very recently 2018 when honorable supreme court of india read down ipc 377 so criminalization marginalization and extortion of queer community has been done by institute first started by mughals codified by british and continued by independent india after 1947 so do you think that we are on the process of uh, decolonization especially because section 377 has been partially at least uh, struck down well i am in total favor of uh, the current state of ipc 377 which because what has been read down is an act a physical act between two consulting adults in a, in in their privacy cannot be considered as criminal but it is still applicable uh, uh, to uh, to ch- like you know to, and to anyone who is below 18 which is very much needed whether you are queer or non queer you are straight or gay doesn't matter uh, so i completely support the current status of ipc 377 that's why the legal term is called as read down and not complete removal of the ipc 377 Right. what has been read down and decriminalized is absolutely perfect and this is how it should be uh mm. on the top of it many people have this consumption concept that we queers are like you know pedophiles and things like that and and which is not so true uh and that pedophilia cannot be supported should not be supported 
and should be criminalized ipc 377 is doing that right so i support the current status of ipc 377 as it is there needs to be no change in it any further the criminalization of consulting adults uh, within their privacy was yet criminalized which is read down is what we wanted and has been done by honorable supreme court of india after decades of fights in the courts by n number of community members and organization and i support it but is it enough right. well i don't think so yet on a daily basis lgbt people are being discriminated uh, at at various forums uh, whether it's in the workplace whether it's in education institutes or anywhere else we need an a proper anti discrimination act just the way we say from the constitutional point of view that no indian citizen can be discriminated based on their gender based on their caste based on their creed and class so on and so forth we need to add orientation as well as part of that that nobody should be discriminated based on their orientation or expression point number 1 point number 2 i yet do not have a right to start a family why i cannot call somebody who happens to be of the same gender as my husband or or start a proper like you know dampatya with them yes yeah. so i feel that the marriage equality and anti discrimination act are something we should aspire for and we should work towards for sure right please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel For our other social media links, more content, and to support our work, please visit citti. dot net. Thank you. Namaskar.